Hello, let's do a called Frost Strike Frost Shock Critical Sun ability that focuses on Ama plus Dodge Rate. This one works well with Barrier plus Ama. However, for new players, I don't suggest to start with Barrier. So, on this one, I'm gonna pick up easy approach. Last thing before diving to the main stuff a unique necklace called Transcended Hero Charm makes this build much better, but about that later. Skill board should look something like this. Let's start with the Frost Strike. It's Confidence, Additional Fall Damage, Area Effect, Iron Will, and Quick Attack. For Frost Shock, it's Sharpness, Fine Weakness, Additional Fall Damage, Slaughter, and Winding Wind. Instead of using Winding Wind, you can use Preserve Mana or Acceleration. For Trigger, it's Spell Activation on Attack Hit. For Movement Abilities, it's Roll and Leap Attack with Disarm and Use Count. For attack enhance is fighter's rod with enhance effect, increase duration, time acceleration. You can use vital strike which is gonna be stronger earlier in the game. For defense enhance it's siphon life with time acceleration and increase duration. Shout of provocation with buff activation and hit, hushed shout, lingering shout and enhance effect. For shout of justice with buff activation upon crowd control. For defense enhance toggle it's enduring pain for some extra armor stacks. For attack seal, it's condensed elements or critical chance. Both are gonna be good. Charms. You can start with Boreal for arm amplification and melee damage amplification, then go into Castor for elemental damage shake and decrease and elemental damage jump, then go Mirror City for cold damage shake and decrease and cold damage amplification, and last you can do Alyssa for area damage amplification. For the charms themselves, it's critical damage, critical rate, then damage multiplier, damage multiplier when using a two-hander weapon, and for the third affix you can choose HP, multipliers or flat, or chaos or elemental resistance, whatever you need the most at the time. For relics I suggest to start with Sabda, for chaos resist and um, mental stimulation with cooldown recovery speed and increased buff effect. For the second one is Aquila, for the cold penetration, Third one, you have plenty of choices. You can go speaker for maximize damage, level for attack speed, or caster for area effect and area damage. For the fourth one, I highly suggest to pick up Boreal, as the fourth one only gonna have 15 levels. And Boreal gives HP on level 1. Zodiac, so the most important thing to note is that you always want to spend your points onto the specializations first. So first pack opens up when you spend 22 points, second 45 and third 70. Another thing is that if I say that the Zodiac node is optional, you don't have to pick it immediately. You only pick it up when you need some extra points to spend to open up your specializations or you leave it for the last when you pick up the main stuff. So let's start. First Afros, then Explorer, Gem, Prella, Petal. First pick is Dawn, but you can do Brilliance, but I suggest to start with Dawn as it's easier. And we can only spend 7 points right now, but after you finish the quest in the Saluto area, you can spend 9 points. So I, I suggest to start with Uplift, Overpower. Strength Damage Amplification. After that you can pick up Convert Mana, but Convert Mana leeches your health, so you need a way to keep yourself sustained. And that opens up when you have a first specialization. Then Flash. Lightning. Nemera. Frost Float is optional. You don't have to pick it early, you need only to pick it up when you don't have 
anywhere to else to spend your points. Hail is a second spec. You want to start with Tempest into Strength Damage Amplification into Sharpness. But when you get two extra points from the quest, you want to remove Sharpness or remove Strength Damage Amplification and go into Elemental Observer. Scent. Artemis is optional. This is the way to solve your sustain issues before you get spec 3 so you could use convert mana. But you want to remove this as, as soon as you pick up spec 3. Deadly Poison. Maggot. Plus 4 dam damage multiplier is optional one because it might be hard to get strength, dexterity and intelligence to 100 and more early into the game. So you don't have to pick up this if you can benefit from it. Plague. I didn't finish the, all the nodes, but you want to pick up critical damage in here and critical rate. I didn't have any points and I wanted to show a little bit more this time. Farmer, you can go into HP amplification. Hunter, you want to pick up time of the hunt. Blacksmith for some defenses. Sympathy is third spec. In this one, you can spend nine points immediately. So you want to start with HP Absorb Limit and the HP Absorb on hit. This one gives you a lot of sustain. With this you can remove the Artemis HP on kill. Then you can go into Area Damage Amplification and Strike Damage Amplification. If you want to be a little bit more tanky, you can opt into HP Amplification. Atmospheric Pressure, you want to pick up Cold Penetration in here. Itemization. For any critical build, we're always looking for a weapon that has highest critical rate possible. In this case, we are using Staff, which has critical base of 14. We can also use a two-hand axe in this build, but axe only has 0.9 speed. For the affixes, we are focusing on gear critical rate first. After that, critical damage, weapon damage multiplier, call damage flat, weapon damage flat, or weapon speed is gonna be good. For the neck, we are looking for critical damage implicit neck. You want to get called damage flat, elemental damage multiplier, and after that, it's up to you. You can opt into some HP, stats, elemental resistances, or chaos resistances, or even a hit rate. For the ring, we are looking for attack critical rate ring. Again, we are looking for attack critical rate multiplier on the ring, then critical damage, elemental damage multipliers, attack speed. After that, it's HPs, or stats, resistances, or hit rates, whatever you need the most. For the armor, we are looking for gear armor multiplier. The higher the tier of the item, the more efficient it's gonna be to roll armor, armor multiplier. Armor flat on a high tier item is kinda not enough. Then you can get some HPs, HP multipliers. On the suffix part, you can get some resistances, hit rate, or chaos resistance, whatever you need the most. For the boots, the main difference is that you want to roll movement speed increase. After that, you can get armor multiplier, or go for offensive roll as melee damage. On the suffix part, it's again whatever you need the most, lightning resistance, hit rate, or chaos resist. For this build, there is another thing that I highly suggest to get, and that's gonna be a unique neck. That's called Transcended Hero Charm. This one makes this build so much better as it gives insane amount of frost strike range, attack speed and critical damage, together with damage amplification. This is the best one you can have, and this is almost a must-have. Upgrades in the skill board can look something like this. So let's start with the Frost Strike. You want to awaken Frost Strike into Source, and Frost Shock into Source or Origin. Source is gonna be more area effect and some elemental resistances, while Origin is just gonna be a little bit more damage. On the Frost Strike, you want to get Focus at Strike, Grand Approach, Fighting Spirit, Melee Damage Amplification with Fine Weakness. And on Frost Shock, you want to get Mana Storm, Strike, Concentrated Area Damage, and Cold Penetration. If you have enough Cold Penetration, you can use an Elemental Damage instead. When you have more critical later in the game, you can change Fine Weakness into Mana Storm or any other rune that gives you damage amplification. Instead of using Leap Attack, Penetrating Slash is going to have fast animation and you can link Penetrating Slash with buff activation when using movement skill and have it on Shadow Provocation. 
So whenever you're gonna use penetrating slash and your shadow provocation is gonna be off cooldown, it's gonna proc shadow provocation. I kept shadow of justice in here, but if you're not playing hardcore mode, you can use instead totem activation when using enhanced skill and link it with weakened totem. It's gonna be more single target damage. Instead of using enduring pain as defense and tan struggle, I suggest to use Veil of Protection and use Wind Veil, as it gives projectile damage in increase and this thing is really hard to get an, on any other source. I added Seal of Dodge but for defense seal, but you can use any, any defensive seal. It can be physical damage domain, elemental resistance, cage resistance, elemental domain, whatever you need at the time the most. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions feel free to ask on YouTube or you can find me on Twitch. Have a nice day and have fun with a new build. GG's!